Today I want to do a follow-up video for the CD player that I 3D printed a belt that opens the tray. Now I've let this player sit for a month unused completely, and I wanted to do that to see if the belt would hold its shape. Now I have not ejected the disc once since I recorded that video over a month ago, so it's had plenty of time to set if it's going to. Now obviously this is a different scale than, say, years or decades, but this should let me know the short-term viability of this. I don't know if 3D printed belts are going to be a real viable long-term option yet, but there's only one way to find out, and that's continuous testing. All right, I've just plugged it in, so let's see if I can turn it on and eject the tray. Ah, it's not a great sign. Well, it did work without needing to be touched to pull it out. I think I can hear it in there. Well, after that initial one, it seems okay. You can actually see the belt while the tray's open, and if I try and close it, it doesn't seem like it's doing super great, and it uh, doesn't look too great either. It looks like one of the... Uh, layers is falling off of it. Oh, something doesn't feel right like it's misaligned. Hmm, I think it just stopped. Well, so far it's looking like this story doesn't have a happy ending. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up and get a better look at that belt to see what's gone wrong. Oh yeah, that belt's not looking pretty in there. Uh, so layers are definitely starting to come off. Also, I just, whoa, that stretched a ton. It definitely wasn't that flexible when I put it on. That's weird. Well, let me pop off uh, that piece again. Let's not move the tray now because it becomes misaligned and then it's a pain. Oh, there's the belt seam. There we go. Oh, we got little bits of belt kind of stuck all around here. Uh, so that's cool. Some of it's sticking to the pulley, but I think it's just because the layers came off. So here's what's left of that belt. Uh, definitely looks like some of the layers were coming off. Ah, oh, well, okay. That happened. So I think this is partially going to be a problem, like what I had with the HP 86 keys, where I need to randomize the layer change position. So I think I'm going to go ahead and reprint this and do that to see if that makes a bigger difference. Pretty sure this is the slicer setting I want to change. I don't want to make this random. That way my seam isn't in one spot, making it much easier to break the belt. I'm not super thrilled with how that belt printed, but it's good enough for now. I need to do some more calibrating with my printer, and I think I should spend some time dialing in this flexible filament a bit more. Right along here you can see my biggest problem with this. Some of the layers didn't adhere very well, and it left this gap in the middle of the print. This could lead to the belt breaking in two while it's under tension in the player. I may replace this belt with one that doesn't have that problem after I get my printer recalibrated. If I do, I'll make a comment down below so you can follow along with when I make changes to this. But this new belt's definitely good enough to put in for now, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it in there. Now you can directly compare how much more difficult it is to get the belt on to taking it off, because it seemed really... Okay, that wasn't too bad, actually. <laughs> well, whatever. Alright, let's put the gear back on, and the retention circle. Alright, time to put it back in and see if it's working. Alright, let's see how the new belt's doing. Much better. Ah, oh, yes. 
It's obviously not acceptable to have to replace the belt every month, but I think through trial and error I can get some design practices in place that will make this more reliable in the future. It's obviously not a viable solution to have to print a new belt every month, but this at least puts it in the test category, where you can print a new belt to test a device to determine whether or not it's worth ordering parts and trying to fully repair it. I'm confident though that I can get this dialed in to the point where this is going to be a very good option. I still don't have any other flexible filaments to try printing belts out of, and I'm starting to lean towards getting a spool of Ninja Flex because I think that's one of the most flexible ones. It does, however, appear to be a problem that it's going to stretch over time. Maybe if I printed the belt a little bit larger to begin with, that wouldn't happen. It's definitely something I'm going to have to test with. So for the last test for the CD player, I'd left it sitting for a month, untouched. I don't know if that was the right choice. I don't think that the belt held its shape too badly. So I think this time around, I'm going to try and force myself to open and close the tray five times each day. That'll definitely put some miles on that belt, because the other one didn't have to move, it just sat there. So when it breaks, I'll find out sooner this time, because it could have done that in a week, I don't know. I, I waited a whole month to investigate it outright. There will be more videos in this series later, so stay tuned for those. But for now, I think that was everything I wanted to cover. I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time.